Happy New Year and welcome to another edition of The Well Child Show. My name is Kemak Unyenuchea as usual and I'm your host. Thank you so much for staying with us on the program and it's my prayer that this year will bring lots of pleasant surprises to you and your loved ones. On today's edition of The Well Child Show, I thought about starting the, the year with a very important topic. There's a popular saying that when you educate or empower a girl child, you have educated and empowered a society. So on the program today, we're going to be looking at a topic that we treated sometime towards the end of last year on raising confident girls. Thank you for joining me on the program today. I'm going to take a very quick breather. And when I return, the Well Child Show continues. Don't go away. Welcome back. It's still the Well Child Show, and my name is Kemak Onyenuchea. I welcome you to a beautiful year, and I hope that the year will bring lots of pleasant surprises. Today on the show, we're looking at the topic, Raising Confident Girls. And I have someone very special with me in the studio today, a very lovely lady, a pediatric nurse. She has a bachelor's degree in nursing with specialty in pediatrics. She's also an advocate for the rights and empowerment of the girl child. But best of all, she's my baby sister, Jessaline Onyenuchea. You're welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so how has it been? How has the year been so far? Oh, so far so good. Yeah, great. You're having fun, right? Absolutely. All right, thank you for being on the program today. I know this is a topic that um, speaks to you as an individual, as a human being. Raising confident girls, in your own words, can you explain to us what exactly the concept of confidence in girls actually means? Or who is a confident girl? A confident girl is a girl that's secure within her own skin, a girl that knows what she wants um, and isn't ashamed to want what she wants. And mm -hmm. she goes after what she wants with no apologies. A confident girl is a girl that is secure enough to say no to the things that she doesn't want because she's actually saying yes to herself. Mm. Um, a confident girl is a girl that's secure enough to congratulate her fellow girl. A girl that is secure enough to be genuinely happy for her fellow girl. Everyone has their own season, right? So mm. you celebrate others in their season and by God's grace they'll celebrate you in yours. So that is a confident Mm, perfect. All right. Now let's look at um, this issue because whenever we talk about confidence in girls, there's usually a misconception mm -hmm. that um, we're bothering around arrogance right. and haughtiness. Right. Where do you draw the line between confidence and arrogance? Confidence is, is from within. Arrogance is snooty, bad attitude. Just because you're confident doesn't mean that you're arrogant. Mm. But a lot of people like to think that, oh, this girl's too confident, something is wrong. Mm. They want to down the girl, put her back into a little bubble. They mm. don't want her to be vocal. They don't want her to be proud. They don't want her to be too outspoken. They need her to be succumbed. A confident girl is one that is very, how would I say, uh, very opinionated, mm -hmm. she's articulate, she um, can hold a conversation, um, she can express what she wants, she doesn't have to take the lead from others, mm. and just because she's expressing what she wants doesn't mean that she's being arrogant, she's just, she just knows what she wants. Mm. So there's a big difference, a big difference that has to be. Right, now in our part of the world I have observed right that um, a girl or a woman can be anything she wants to be except have an opinion awesome. because a lot lots of times we find out that once a girl or a lady is able to stand mm -hmm. and speak for herself and you know like you said say no to the things she doesn't want there seems to be like such a coming down or a coming off 
negatively of people towards that girl. You find that in people that are not secure within themselves. Mm. So let's play it against a, a boy. If a confident girl speaks articulately, she knows what she's saying, she has her own opinion, she has her own mind, but you know who she's speaking her mind to, he's thinking to himself like, this girl is bigger than me. Mm. So in order for him to feel like he is above or a same or average or whatever, he has to now think of a way to bring the girl down. No, but I need, I, need, I need us to understand something, because I've always taken umbrage to the general opinion that um, women, every woman, is under every man. Right. I really don't buy into that school of thought. Uh, what do you think? I think we're, we're past that. Mm. I think that was probably um, in the 1990s, you know, back then, mm -hmm. our parents were, you know, vibrant. <laughs> but, you know, this is 2020, and I think that um, we have to get away from that mindset. Mm. I think we're above that, we're past that. I feel like for a guy, um, a confident guy, you can see a confident guy with the with his choice of companion, mm -hmm. with his choice of company. So if a man doesn't is if he is um, intimidated by a vocal woman, it basically shows you the character of the guy. Mm. All right, now let's come back to the home mm -hmm. because the home is the fulcrum of society and everything, of course, you know, springs from the home. Right. What role would you say the family plays in raising confident girls? A huge role. Mm. A huge role. Raising a confident girl, you know, when you have kids, you think it's just to, you know, make sure that they're well fed, make sure that they're, um, that they are well hydrated, make sure that they have a roof over their heads, make sure that they're going to school. It's deeper than that. Mm. You have to tackle their mental health. And it starts from a young age. Girls become very influential very early. So, you know, right from out of the womb, you're so beautiful. Mm. You are so beautiful. You're doing so amazing. Every little thing, it needs to be positive reinforcement, positive messages, uplifting messages, constant reminders that you are worthy, you are able, you can do it, you can, there is nothing that you can't achieve, just positive reinforcement. And then as they get older, you start to engage them a little bit further, you start to think, you know, talk to them about, you know, what, you know, how was your day today? What did you do today? And it's not that you're just asking, you're asking and you're listening to what she's telling you. And when you're listening, you're grasping and accepting and looking for a way to connect with your child so that you can guide her the correct way so that when she goes out into the world, she's not um, guided by her peers. Mm. So. Okay, now that's, it's really interesting that you, you know, bring about the topic of peer pressure. Let's talk a bit about peer pressure. And I know, of course, you, you're a young girl growing up. Yeah. Can you tell us your experience about how pressure from your peers actually had an impact in your own life? Mm, me personally, um, I think that the only peer pressure that I can think about is like when it comes to like smoking and drinking. You know, the normal thing when you go out, you know, if you're not drinking alcohol, how come you're not drinking? Are you okay? Mm. You know, you don't take. Are you not having fun? Are you all right? I don't want to drink. Mm. It's plain and simple. Some people might feel like, oh, this guy keeps asking me, I should drink, I should drink, I should drink. Let me just take. No. If you don't want to drink, you don't have to drink. It's not your forte. Mm. It's not your advice. And it's okay. Mm. Some For some people, um, I know growing up, I had a conversation with a friend, and she told me that, you know, she feels like she kind of went astray because she didn't get the love and affection that she wished that she could have gotten from her father. Mm. So because of that, she was going outside to look for that love and affection from other men. Mm. And because of that, she's been heartbroken many, many, many times. And of course, exposed to some kinds of interactions that she shouldn't have been exactly. that at she that regrets. age. Mm. That she actually regrets. Mm. So if we can tackle those things from early, then you stand a higher percentage in you know your children, your girl children, not being exposed to such hurt mm. in life, mm. it can be prevented. Excellent. Now, before we go on a break, can you touch a bit on? You talked about your friend and the fact that there was a missing relationship with her father. Can you tell us a bit about how? 
the presence or absence of a father in the life of a girl could have some impacts on the girl. Very impactful. A lot of people don't understand and realize that that love and affection from a father is very necessary. There are fathers that are absent and there are fathers that are presently absent. Mm. So it's not just for you to be present in the home. You need to engage your kids. Mm -hmm. You need to tell them how much you love them. Mm -hmm. If a father tells a child how much he loves them, how worthy they are, how special they are, there is no way that girl, nine times out of 10, will allow someone outside to treat her anyhow. Mm -hmm. there is, she's not gonna put herself in situations that girls without fathers you know, would put themselves. So it's very, very important for a father to play a lucrative role in his girl child's life. Mm. It's very, very important. Great. That's a message to all our fathers. The value of your presence and your engagement in the lives of your daughters and even your male children is invaluable. Let's go on a quick musical break. When we return, the show continues. Please stay with us. Welcome back, and once again, Happy New Year. If you're just joining us, it's the Well Child Show, and my name is Kemak Onyenuchea, your host. On the program today, we've been looking at the topic, Raising Confident Girls. And I have uh, with me in the studio a very special girl child advocate, a nurse, pediatric nurse, and my baby sister, Jessaline Onyenuchea. Welcome back, Jessaline. Thank you very much. Right, now, before we went on the break, you were talking about the relationship dynamic between fathers and their daughters and we're looking at how that impacts the lives of the girls in the future by way of making them confident. Can you build a bit more on that? It's, it's very weird how the world works. You know, girls look to men for guidance. They look to guys to show them the way mm -hmm. naturally. Mm -hmm. So if a father is very active in his daughter's life, not just present, you know, they're mm -hmm. paying the bills. Passive. You know, passive. They need to be active. So that means sometimes take your daughter on a date. Mm. Show her what it means to go on a healthy, beautiful, positive date. Take her for some ice cream. Open her door. Show her how she should be treated when, you know, eventually she's ready to start dating. Mm. Um, a step further, fathers need to lead by example. So, you need to make sure that you're treating their mother with respect. Mm. Show them what it means to have and live with uh, in a healthy marriage. You know, they children in general, but most especially girl children, they see things and things stick with them. Mm. And you know, things become cycles. So if you see negative things, you might in your mind be thinking, oh, I don't want this to happen to me. Oh, this is not gonna happen to me. Oh, when it's time for me to get married or when it's time for me to get out there, I'm not going to do this. But then you don't even know when you find yourself. Exactly, because it's a reverse psychology. Exactly. Right. So it's very important for parents, fathers, mothers to be very aware, conscious of things that they're saying around their kids, around their children, girl children, um, things that they're doing. Because um, everything is, is being copied, everything is being recorded, mm. mentally recorded. Mm. So it's, it's very, very, very vital in raising girl children. Mm. Excellent. All right, now let's move to education mm -hmm. and um, skills empowerment. Right. Now, how does, what role does education play? In, because it might surprise you, we're still in an era where in this part of the world, we're still trying to battle and get people on board on girl-child education and empowerment. Now, how does this contribute to make girls you know, grow up confident? I don't want to be misunderstood when I say this, but um, education is very important. But if you see in today's society, most people go to college and you find that what, they're stu what they studied is not what is paying their bills. Mm. So um, I feel like parents should nurture their kids' creativity, mm. embrace it, help them understand their creative side, help them to work and navigate through what the different things that they might be interested in, because you never know what success will bring to them, mm. what ideal you know, would, would, 
manifest in their lives. So um, as far as education and, and skills, I feel like um, it's a constant conversation. As early as middle school, even elementary, what do you want to be when you grow up? I mean, little Terrence, um, he was saying the other day that he wants to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. Five years old, I'm going to be a pilot. So continue to engage your kids, you know. Find out different things that interest them. He might want to be a pilot today. And, and tomorrow he, wants to, he wants to be a doctor. A doctor. <laughs> then he wants to be a lawyer. Then he wants to be a producer. Mm -hmm. Just continue to engage them. Make them, you know, make their their mental juices flow work. Mm -hmm. You know, once once they get to the age where it really matters, I think that with your guidance, um, your support, your open dialogue, they will definitely know what they would want to pursue in life. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it's also important that when you do have these uh, dialogues with your children, that you don't judge them. Mm -hmm. Because maybe this person wants to be a musician. And for you, musicians don't make money. Don't judge them. Because you don't know where the success is coming from. So just help him nurture his create their crea creativity and um, pray for them. And you know, I think that when a family works together, there's only success that can come out. Right now, you talked about um, judging children, mm -hmm. and I know lots of parents are watching right now. Right. Can you tell us in some specific ways how parents like judge their children, or maybe um, don't give voice mm -hmm. to the opinions? Of their kids. You know, it's um, very, very normal. Parents don't, may not realize when they start to compare their children against each other. That's a form of judgment. They don't realize that they're comparing their child to their best friend's child. Mm. Another form of judgment. Why can't you be as good as this person? Or why can't? Do, why didn't you do both? You know, it's all judging. Also, let's say a child decides that. He wants to be a librarian. A librarian? <laughs> what, what can a librarian do? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> exactly. So, you know, just try as much as you can to be consciously aware of the things that you are saying to your kids because you never know when that one thing that you say to them might hurt them. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think that's... Yeah, great. Okay, now, I know we talked a bit about peer pressure, right. but let's look at the mother of all peer pressure. Social media. Social media. Oh, social media is what's raising our kids today. Right. And it's very wrong. Mm. Very wrong. I think that um, children go to social media, they see all these pretentious people on there, and they want to imitate it. Mm. I think that if you, in the home, are on top of it, your kids are not going to want, they'll know real from fake. They'll know reality from, you know, falsehood. Exactly. So for me, that's something that I'm still battling in my mind. I haven't gotten to that point because I don't have any kids yet. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that as parents, you need to definitely moder monitor your kids' internet usage. Um, you need to monitor their phone usage, mm. their texting, their emails, because a lot of things go on social media, go on on social media. Um, you won't even know when um, your kid might be suffering from depression. They'll mm. be smiling at you, laughing with you, but they're in their phones, writing notes to themselves. I'm so sick of this. I can't believe this is happening to me. Why isn't anyone listening to me? So you need to really be on top of internet usage, social media usage. And even with the social media usage, you can see that they're looking at all these things, but you're constantly telling them, oh, these things are fake. These things are not real. And you show them how they're fake and how they're not real. Because everyone on social media lives a fake life. Mm. If you're flossing on social media, 10 times out of 10, you don't have shishi. Right? <laughs> so it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a battle. But I think that um, as time goes on, more people are understanding that, you know, social media lifestyle is not real. Mm. That it's not something that needs to be emulated. It's just a form of entertainment. Right. Now, in your opinion, how can parents, you know, monitor their children, like, on social media? Um, you know, Instagram uh, most especially has a, um, 
in their what would you call it their settings mm -hmm. you can see how often someone is on social media you can excuse me you can see the things that they're viewing on social media so when you become aware of what they're viewing if it's something that you as a parent don't like then you can bring it to their attention not in a negative way just like you know why you know why what's your interest in this mm. understand them and then redirect them well wow, that's that's excellent so in essence it's not a war it's not a war we will not have a fulfilling rich symbiotic open oh, communication mm -hmm. with our children yeah. all right now um finally let's look at celebrity mm -hmm. and popularity mm -hmm. i know for young girls it's something that is really alluring mm -hmm. the allure to be a celebrity what do you have to say about that to our parents and how they can help you know nurture mm -hmm. their girls and channel them properly um celebrities are not built overnight so i think that um if a parent notices that they have a child that is wanting to live that celebrity lifestyle, they can bring awareness to them. Let's say, um, what celebrity should we use as an example? Anyone, just. Uh, give me a celebrity. I just don't mention anyone, just let's okay. just go. So let's say if you have a celebrity, um, the mom can now do her research, see where, how, where they started from to where they got to where they are today most times um, it takes years for them to get to where they are today it wasn't overnight mm. and in those years most of those celebrities are sleeping on mattresses on someone's living room floor most of those celebrities are um, receiving handouts right in every in any in <laughs> other words everyone has a backstory exactly so it's not all that glitter glitters that is gold mm. so once you get your your kids to understand that they can now make realistic decisions towards their life and you know remove you know this celebrity facade, facade and reality mm. thank you so much Jessalyn thank you for it is it was great having you on yeah. the program today yeah. sadly we've run out of time and to our viewers as always these conversations continue on our social media platforms on Instagram at Global Child Health and at The Well Child Show. You can send us emails, questions, inquiries, support to info.wellchildshow at gmail.com. And of course, to view this and other episodes of The Well Child Show, you can log on to our YouTube page at Well Child TV. Now, let me take this opportunity to call on well intentioned organizations and individuals. Come partner with us. Advertise your products and your services on The Well Child Show by contacting the producer on the number showing on your screen. Thank you so much for being a part of The Well Child Show today. Remember, it's a new year and the health and safety of our children must be priority. I'll see you next time on another edition of The Well Child Show. And as I sign out, always remember, child health and safety is everybody's business. Goodbye and God bless you.